Featuring Kendall Coyne Schofield, Miro Haskinen, Clayton Keller, Elias Pedersen, Cam Atkinson, Jack Eichel, Matthew Barzell, and two time fastest skater Connor McDavid. Sergey Fedorov was the first man to win the fastest skater event. Others who are current players who won it are Jonathan Drouin, Dylan Larkin, and Connor McDavid has won the last two. But this is the first time for Kendall Coyne Schofield. And this will be pretty close, if not faster, than what all these guys are going to skate tonight. Oh boy. Look at that stride. Talk about no fear around the corners. Fantastic. And a terrific move by the National Hockey League as the players all stand and applaud at the benches to bring Kendall Coyne Schofield along with some other national team members here to participate in the All-Star Game and promote the women's game. And that lap just did an awful lot of promotion. Did it ever, and it brought everybody to their feet but the one thing I can't believe is just the fearlessness I mean she just was going full speed around the corner the choppy strides look at the determination and I bet it looked faster down there Kevin than it did up here she went flying by and she was a little bit worried before I talked to her down below and she was a little bit nervous but you're right she attacked <laughs> that course and there's a lot of nervous guys right now that are about yeah, to compete throwing uh, the gauntlet she down. set the bar high I'll tell you what Kevin there were a lot of surprised eyes over on those benches the players weren't here yesterday for right. the rehearsal as we were to see that lap so we weren't really surprised at how fast she went they were jumping up on the bench and they couldn't believe it so we saw it firsthand yesterday. Oh, Miro oh, Haskinen went down on the corner. He is an absolutely terrific skater who floats on the ice, but that's an unfortunate slip, and he's checking an edge there to see what happens. I blame the trainer there. Yeah, hopefully it's just an edge. I mean, the one thing you never want to see is any kind of injury, and so often it's that tight, tight turns, and he just toe picked a little bit there on the first one, and then was going so steep an angle that he couldn't control it and that right leg went hard into the boards good Scary. for him good for him to want to do it again Miro Haskin is just 19 the third overall pick in the 2017 draft Here we go. Scott's with Kendall and yes Kendall Schofield here 14-3-4 uh, is a spectacular time uh, what's it mean to you and it's going to beat some of the players in this competition What's it mean to have your time recorded amongst some of the best in the NHL? Oh, it's an honor to be here honor to compete alongside the men and uh, just awesome for the growth of women's hockey You know you're constantly testing your limits of competition. I know you compete <laughs> American Ninja Warrior in June in uh, August I think in Chicago you joined the Chicago Professional Summer Hockey League and played against Patrick Kane um, What's your take on your career to this point? Uh, you know, just follow my dreams, believe in myself, and I believe there's nothing women can't do that men can't do easily. Fair point. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So 13-9-1 for Miro Hiskinen on his second start. That's a pretty good time. And here's Clayton Keller from St. Louis representing the Arizona Coyotes. Clayton is small in stature, fleet of foot, and he burns around his final corner here with his right crossovers to the finish line. Now I think it's a bit of a disadvantage for a lefty to be going this way. I think you cross over naturally better on your forehand side. That stick gets in the way, doesn't it? It's not making excuses yeah. for uh, Keller <laughs> no. right now. Like, he was just slow, but yeah, I noticed he <laughs> took a little bigger route around. You know, the sometimes you try to cut the corner so quickly, and you got to be worried. Look at how wide he went around both ends, and that takes a little bit of time off. I'm concerned about the, the warp, and here we go. I, I think Pedersen's going to go the other way. He's he gonna is going to go the other way. And that's maybe a smarter tactic here. But I didn't see you guys warming up too much, so I don't know how much they're actually going to push it here. Elias is deceptively fast. And picking up speed on the first corner. Deception's his middle name, I think, isn't it? Uh, with everything that he does, he has been a game changer already. 
in Vancouver in his first year and the leading candidate to be rookie of the year in the National Hockey League at 14-5-2 in his first ever skill competition in All-Star Game. You, know, you just get a sense of just how smooth he is and you now the one thing he does so many things with the puck but he showed there he's got a really good ability to cut those edges he's got the stick in the air and he had a good good speed in the straightaways there that I think helped him quite a bit. And I mean, I don't mean to poke holes at his skating, but I think he's only going to get faster as he gets yeah. older and stronger and, and more explosive. The, the gym and the strength coach in Vancouver, they do some work with him. He'll be even more explosive. Here's Columbus Blue Jacket, Cam Atkinson. One of five brothers from Riverside in Greenwich, Connecticut. Won an NCAA scoring championship at Boston College, having a terrific season with the Blue Jackets. And here he comes to the finish line. And he's at 14, uh, 14 1 5. And moves into third. Well, again, you see the difference just in the shorter players. A little bit of a short, choppy strides, just trying to make sure after watching Hiskin and fall on that first one. I think everyone's a little bit more cautious around those corners. Well, he fell, but he's still got the fastest time in the competition so far in his restart. And here's Jack Eichel as we bring in Scott again. Jim, thanks very much. We got Matt Barzell here. He's getting ready to go and fast skater, but we want to show you a piece of video here, Matt. Uh, it's in the corner of the monitor. You can see it, I hope. A little flashback and uh, tell us what you think. Oh, yeah. Uh, didn't feel too good. That's Kevin Bieksa. Yeah. Was that your welcome to the NHL moment? Uh, yeah, it kind of woke me up, actually. It was having a tough start, so. Woke me up. He's right here. Anything you want to Let, say to let's, him? Let's, oh, give, let's give him a little credit. <laughs> I didn't even see him. Oh, man. He, he came <laughs> back. For that. Hey, thanks. You went down, but you came back in the game. Yeah. So yeah. it was, it showed your toughness. It demonstrated your toughness. Thank you. And I know you were in Vancouver. You got to get going here. Good luck. <laughs> Oh, he's not holding a grudge. You actually thought that was a penalty, didn't you? I mean, it was a little bit late. Uh, I'm not going to admit that to his face, but like I said, he showed toughness in coming back to in finishing the game. And I know he's a Vancouver guy with some Vancouver friends and family. I'm not sure how they felt about that hit. 21-year-old from Coquitlam, a suburb of Vancouver. Heads up, though, right, kid? He's an outstanding player. Barry Trotz's new coach has challenged him to have a complete game. And as we get to the halfway mark of the season, he is now a complete player in the NHL, better defensively than he's ever been. And he can still score, and you can see he can skate. Oh, boy. It's Jack Eichel who still has the lead. Eichel with a 13.582 and just a little bit of Matthew Barzil. Here's the player tracking that we've talked about from the National Hockey League. You can just see the route that he takes around a wide turn to the outside and try to cut it quickly on the other side. So here's the two time reigning champion Connor McDavid of the Edmonton Oilers. 13.45 thir is the fastest time he's done it in. Nobody wants to watch him go there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's one of the guys who could carry a puck around the ice here and Pretty be close almost to as the fast. Same. Yeah, absolutely. It's amazing how he accelerates when he picks up the puck and look at him go tonight in San Jose. This is a skater. That's a powerful stride and he's won it again. And don't you notice the difference there? His feet never stop moving. Kevin, that's the one thing, even around the corners, he never broke stride. They say he's the best on his edges in the league, and I know he does a lot of work in the summer, but he's very good on his edges, and he's able to hold the edge and, and keep stride. Not many people can do it. You see a lot of guys when they try to do it, they slip, right? They can't hold that edge. This guy's a special kid. Yeah, some take a little bit of hesitation and stop the stride. He just makes sure that his feet are moving the entire time he goes around, and and that's what's scary for a defenseman because he could be just idle gliding around and then he pops a couple crossovers and he's gone and you're trying to backtrack and he takes you wide and you look silly. Connery the first three time winner of fastest skater in uh, skills competition. Uh, 13 three seven eight is a spectacular time but you knew what you had to do heading into the event. So what were you thinking. I uh, just go as fast as I could. There's uh, <laughs> nothing more to it. Uh, that was the strategy? <laughs> that was the strategy, if you can believe it. Uh, here's the big question. Did the haircut make any difference uh, in the uh, fastest skater skill tonight? Uh, I thought so. If I had my long hair, it would have been flopping all over the place. So 
All good. It was uh, nice and short. All right. Thanks, Connor. Appreciate your time. Jim.